not used to talking this much. I mean, I don't, I don't know if we really wrote toward an audience. I mean, certainly there was a lot of respect for the fans. We had a few hardcore fans, Titans fans, you know, who were into it in high school and junior high on our staff. So there was a respect for the show and for the work that had been done by Wolfram Perez and Jeff. And clearly there was, we cared a lot about those characters and doing them justice. And we knew it wasn't going to be a CW show, I'm sure, in terms of its tone. And in, not, I like the CW shows, but in order to get a, those are free shows, right? Um, relatively free. And in order to do a pay service show, it was important that we give people something that you couldn't see on normal TV. So it required you know production values that were more elevated, more cinematic, music. So it was trying to create more of a movie experience for television. And I know a lot of shows try to do that, but we did that really specifically. In terms of the, we also wanted to make, a lot of our audience has grown up with these characters through childhood and adolescence. So we wanted to try to meet them where they are in their lives right now, which are struggles about identity, confusion about, you know, integrating darkness and light, um, and having a kind of psychological dimension to these characters to slow them down so they didn't get engulfed by some master big bad plot that, uh, that took over any kind of sense of personality or relationship. What was the biggest challenge about bringing these characters to a show like this? Well, setting the worlds, you know, trying to figure out what the worlds are, um, you know, balancing superpowers and character stories. I mean, the story of the show comes alive for me often when the superpowers are there, but it's, you can't stay there, you can't live just there in the world of powers. So it was balancing the psychological reality, making it grounded, but still allow for a world where Raven can be Raven, you know, and Starfire can be Starfire. It's, that's always a struggle to make it feel, and you kind of only know it when you see it, to go, okay, that feels too much, or this feels now we're getting to the point where we're in fantasy. So I think, tonally, it was a big challenge. You mentioned the CW shows, and um, they tend to do this, like, baddie and the sea something thing. Are you guys going to do some more? Are you going to do some more? I'll tell you when I know. Um, since we just got announced, but when we actually sit down to do it, I mean, you you know, there's a reason that you come up with those stories, right, of a, of a villain and, and something to fight over, especially in a family story, because you need reasons, external reasons. We also struggle with these in our own families, of external reasons that pull us apart and then the internal things that pull us apart. Uh, in terms of the external, we haven't figured it out yet, but I'm pretty confident we will have a big bad in season two, uh, but what it is, I don't know. Have the Jason angle with it, and have that be a, an animosity between like father and son sort of thing to begin the story. Well, it's a story. In many ways, there's many father-son stories. It's a great question in, in our, on our show, um, and in, fam in in any kind of family. It's our show is a family show, so there's going to be a father-son dynamic in there. We that was important to us. It really stemmed from an argument we had in the writers' room, which is. What actually is the legacy of Bruce, Bruce's upbringing of um, Uptick? And there was a strong argument that would play on both sides, was fairly polarized as it was dysfunctional, a nature versus nurture thing, that, Bruce, that Dick would have been a different person had his parents not died and had Bruce not raised him. And then there was a side of him saying, actually, Dick got a lot out of that. He's blaming something on his dad that actually isn't, that was in him that he thinks his father imposed upon him. And out of that argument, 
came the structure and the creation, not character. Does that have a, a hesitancy in kind of trying to re-ring these stories that maybe kids have grown up with and maybe facing possible backlash with them? If you can kind of talk about the process in trying to figure out which parts of these characters' stories to tell. Well, I can't. It's better to talk to Akiva or Jeff about the pilot since I didn't write the pilot. I came in after they'd written the pilot and they've spent seven years doing it. So that was a long R&D process for them to figure out what stories they wanted to tell and how to go about it. Focusing on Starfire, Raven, Beast Boy, and Robin in the, in the core story. Then we branched out in other characters, you know, Hawk and Dove, Donna Troy. It was important that I, I, I kind of, as I said before, I mean, it's important for us to be respectful with those characters and people's relationship with the characters, but not to allow them to stay static. They needed to grow with the audience, and so I feel like we wanted to give them the psychological dimension that the former incarnations of them didn't have the time or the format to show. And then, do you have any questions? I was just going to ask. I was just going to ask like a fun question. If you had to fight beside any of those titans, who would you want by your side and why? Who would I want to fight the side? Well, I'm not very strong and I got bad shoulders, so I need someone to be fairly acrobatic and quick. I mean, Dove's pretty awesome, you know? But I think Robin would get me in a fight I may not get out of. He, he's got a big appetite for that, so I'd take Dove. Yeah. I'd go Dove. Awesome, cool, yeah. thanks. Even if we lost, we'd look good doing it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, I want to circle back to the idea of because we, I, I've seen the first three episodes, obviously, so obviously kind of the screen, but we still don't really have a whole lot of an idea about who the Titans are fighting yeah. at this point. So is there anything else that you can tease about that? Well, if you know anything about Raven's story, it's a struggle for identity. Everybody's trying to deal with their parents in the show. Starfire doesn't know she, who she is. Raven thinks she has a mom, but then that mom is that she that she may be told that it's not her mom. So in that struggle for identity, it merges the big bad. Family issue because Batman, despite his reputation for being like a loner, has one of the like the largest adopted families ever. So I'm wondering, like, as you move forward, are there any other members of the Bat family besides the ones that we've seen before that you really feel and a lot of um, interesting nuance to the show. Like, who would you want to grab else from the Bat family and kind of take it to Titans? Any Bat girl? <laughs> yeah, I mean, I love that. Um, it's curious, and I'm not being coy. I'd have to really, you know, you always weigh them in in terms of what, what interesting stories can you get out of them, rather than what the costume does to the photo, you know? So, they're all cool, and they're all, they all bring something, but in terms of the stories that we're telling, I'm sorry, I'm getting no, yeah. Last of Light. No. I don't know yet. Because I was, when you were talking, I don't know if there's any Who would you want to see? I was thinking Cassandra Cain, because she has her fond wishes with Lady Shiva, yeah. and she'd be a great villain, and so we've never really Good seen idea. her before. Um, but I don't know if that would be conflict with what PC is doing with the Versus Frame. So, like, is there well, any conflict about that? Yeah, me? there's a lot of that. you got to okay. bet it. You know, so everything we do has to kind of, it's a phone call and a conversation. I mean, it was helpful for me in the first season that I had Jeff Johns to my right and Akiva to my left at the end of the table. So I could go to Jeff, go, we want to do this, what do you think? And he could either say yes right there or I'll make a call that we know very soon. Um, that was helpful. And he's got such an encyclopedic knowledge of that DC universe that it's pretty quick when you get a character, and so do some of our writers, Brian Hill, who's a noted comic book writer. We have Gab Stanton, who is deeply entrenched in the world of Titans. So we were able to, a lot of names got thrown out, and that's, we have this process of vetting it. And then there's the, just like you said, there's the corporate side of it. All right, I have to grab them. Thank Thank you great much. questions, thanks so much. I love all women, let's do this again.